Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we welcome you tonight to the Such Good Shoot podcast. I'm your host, Dozer, here today with Shane, Isaac, and our very, very special guest, Papa Shango. What's <laughs> good time? What's going on, guys? <laughs> Chilling, man. It's a pleasure to have you. Pleasure to be here, man. I'm in Los Angeles right now, chilling. Just got off a podcast. I didn't know. I guess Papa Shango, Godfather. Since I got the Papa Shango hat, we're going in. We well, yeah. well, we're gonna go. We're gonna even do di- dive deeper. We're gonna go. We're gonna go like. And this is one of my questions, so I might as well just throw it out there. Uh, soul taker, right? Did wow, did, soul taker. Yeah. Did now here's the que- legitimate question. Did 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 your boy did your boy steal the gimmick, man? Did did take her? Yeah, did he steal? Did he steal the gimmick? Does he owe? Well, does he owe you a little rub Vince, for thirty think, years of that? I don't think Vince knew anything about Soul Taker <laughs> when he called him the Undertaker. Uh, you know, when I met Mark, he was a uh, master of pain, master. and he had just came from Dallas, where I think he was Texas Red or something. They were his master of pain, and was, uh, that's when I met him. Was that in Memphis or? Memphis, yeah, in about 1989. Wow. You guys are like, damn, I wasn't even born then. No, I was, I was, <laughs> I was, Shane was, wasn't born. I was going to say, I'm, I'm the youngin'. I'm trying to think five, <laughs> almost five years old, depending on, on the time. That was, that was like when I fell in love with uh, the Oakland A's, man, because they were, they were just, they were killing. Are you from the Bay Area? Um, no, I was born and raised in Vermont, but everyone around here is either a Yankees or a Red Sox fan, and uh, I was a young How the hell brother. did you become an A's fan? Well, that was the time. It was like the Bash Brothers, Ricky Henderson, right, and as right. a little kid, it was green and gold, and I loved the colors, and I loved that And, and they had a mule or something, didn't they? The, the elephant, the elephant, man. Charlie like, or something? Oh yeah, they did back in the day. Charlie, the yes, okay, absolutely, yeah. See, and then they got, they got the elephant. The I'm from elephant. the Bay. Yeah. Oh, are you are you fr- originally from that? Area? I'm from Northern right. California. I was born and raised in Northern California. Oh shit! No shit. All right. I thought you were originally from the, the like Vegas. No, I moved to Vegas in '84. '84. And I'm still there, but I'm I can't wait to get out. Yeah, you're done <laughs> with it. I'm going to Vermont. You going to man? You got you can crash on my couch. As soon as I uh, as I can talk my wife into it, I'm going to Vermont. Yeah, well, you got to do at least summers here, man. We got we got the lowest COVID rates too in the country. So. You hear that? The lowest COVID rates. Oh, nice. Summer home you need in people Vermont for that. Yeah. Well, that's the yeah. thing. Yeah, there's no people, man. We we we're outnumbered by sheep here, two to one. And you, and you got moose too, right? There's moose got, running around. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, man, I mean, I you still see them every now and then, but I saw a lot of them because I grew up in a tiny little town on the side of a mountain. And, uh, what moose? Yeah, yeah. I remember driving. Them son of a bitches are big, aren't they? The first moose I ever saw was in a river, and I was like, "Why is there a horse standing <laughs> on the water?" <laughs> and then it walked out, and it was like, yeah, like eight. I have tall, seen. Oh. Pictures of moose. I've never seen one in person, but I've seen pictures of her. I'm like, wow, they're huge. They're like Andre the Giants of mooses. Yo, it's yeah, it's an moose. incredible, it's incredible. Like picture, God, I, picture the biggest horse you've ever seen, and then add like four, oh yeah, four and a half feet to it. It's crazy. That's why everybody's got to walk around with guns. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so when you were, so when you were in, when you first moved to Vegas, is that when you were, you were bartending, you got into the, into the business? Is that how you got introduced to it? Um, I was in Vegas for a few years working in topless clubs and, um, they were filming a movie called Over the Top. Over the Top, see? And- An arm wrestling movie with Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> the, the weirdest <laughs> movie I think I've ever seen. A truck driving arm wrestling movie. <laughs> they filmed that movie at the MGM, which is right down the street. I worked at a club called The Crazy Horse. Saloon. Okay. And Scott Norton was in that movie, along with other wrestlers that didn't have big names. And they would come to my bar where I was the manager, bartender bouncer everything it was the type of bar back then it was a topless club but it had sawdust on the floor that's how you know it was oh shit all right they would come in there and i was just a monster bro i was power lifted and i'm probably six five three twenty 
benching five, 600 pounds. Tatted. And they're like, dude, you should become a wrestler. And I'm like, man, I don't want to do that phony ass wrestling. And then the guy goes, well, have you ever heard of uh, whoever it was? Says, you ever hear of Bam Bam Bigelow? I'm like, oh, yeah, I was a biker. I'm like, yeah, the dude with tattoos. They go, he made a million dollars last year. And I'm like, how much? <laughs> Come again. And then I start thinking, let me see. Get paid to be crazy when I'm crazy anyway. And so uh, I made a call. And this is no bullshit. Probably two and a half years later from that call, I was in the WWI. Uh, uh, F at the time. Wow. Two and a half years wow. later, I was in the WWF. You, you basically went from fucking slinging, slinging drinks and, and making sure people are Dude, fucking my <laughs> first, thrown out. My, my very first match ever. This isn't practice. This isn't rehearsal. This isn't a squash match. My very first match ever was against Jerry the King Lawler in Memphis, Tennessee, on a Monday night, and I beat him in the middle and won the Memphis heavyweight title. And that was my very first match after being in wrestling school maybe two, three months. Was this Sir Charles? No, Sir Charles is, is I um, <laughs> me and Taker have been friends from the back, way back. And in 88, 89, we were a tag team. Well, he went to Japan. When he came back to Japan, I went to Japan. When I came back to Japan, he went to WCW. When I when he went to WCW, I went to Germany and worked eight months with Otto Vons in Germany with Scott Hall, Owen Hart, Chris Benoit, Fit Finley, Dave Taylor, uh, Franz Schumann, Cannon, our PM News. That's the people that I worked with for eight or nine months. And so wow. when I got done there, Taker was in WWF. When I came back, they gave me a tryout in Arizona where Charles was playing for the Phoenix Suns. And they wanted to put some heat on me, so they called me Sir Charles. <laughs> That's a good way to do it. <laughs> they hired me. They Vince, I, I had a, a, a match. Vince hired me. He basically said, go home. I'm going to put you on payroll. He says, you have a body of a monster but you have a baby face. He goes, I got to do something with that face. And that's where they came up with Papa Shango. Now they were so, covering my face. So was that, was that all Vince? All Vince. Now, what, what was your first reaction when they pitched the whole fucking Papa Shango gimmick to you and the idea? Honestly, I said, how much will I make? Okay. <laughs> And they said, we will sign you to three years at this. And I said, I'm in. <laughs> All right. All right. Now I was man. a country music listening, tobacco chewing, hardcore biker when I became Papa Shango. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's pretty dope. That's a that's a transformation, huh? Yes, it was. <laughs> man. Um what do you like? What is like? What is your opinion of the gimmick itself? Do you ever do you feel like it's kind of like, kind of fucked up that like that's like where where they're like, oh yeah, you're you're you you you're baby face. Oh wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa! I thought this was an iced tea. It's like five <laughs> shots of Jack Daniels. <laughs> this is my wife back there listening. Yes, yo. God Jesus bless. Christ, God like, bless it's like that pure woman. Jack Daniels right there. All right, what was the question about Papa Chango? <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious if, like, if if you feel like it's it was it was just kind of racist to, to throw that one at you instead of letting you just be a a baby face, a monster think baby face. WWE did at the time was racist. When we did it, it was cool. It was funny. Times change. Thirty years later, times are different, so it becomes racist. At the time, like when DX did the spoof of the nation, it was funny. It was a job. You were just doing your job. Wrestling to me was always fun. I wasn't a mark for the business. I wasn't a mark for myself. It was a way to make money. It was a way to be crazy with a bunch of crazy motherfuckers just like me <laughs> and get paid for it. So my, more, my whole thing was how much are you going to pay me? You pay me? It's a job. I'll do what you say. I did Papa Shango the best I could. 
don't give a shit about the political side. Right. There were so many people hating on me. I'm going to ruin wrestling and stuff. Don't care. I did the best I could. Uh, and it's what is it now? 30 years later, yeah. almost, people are still talking about it. It's We're talking about it. I'm gonna, the people I'm gonna... today would be lucky 30 years from now that people would still be talking about them. Hell yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it just a little bit more. So so you had you had the big thing with um with Ultimate Warrior and and the and the curse and the and the black goo. Did you do the same thing to Giuliani? Was that was that was that you melting them? Okay, between me and you, <laughs> don't tell anybody. But my wife is the most liberal person you ever want to meet in your life. So I hooked her up. Oh, that's you're, that is very sweet. And I'll be honest, I'm I'm pretty liberal too, but I'm also like I'm so I've gone so far liberal that I've come around to the point where I'm like give every, everybody should everybody should mandatory mandatory have guns. Like that should be <laughs> like that oh, I everybody. Am, yeah. Don't, like, please don't get me started on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I, I am, I, I I am, am one of, you would think that I live in Alabama and I drive an old pickup truck and chew tobacco. How many guns I have? Old old habits die hard, right? Um, been collecting guns for what uh, forty years. Nice. I've been collecting guns, so I have a lot. You I don't. Finish. I don't think I'm gonna have to overthrow the government. I don't think zombies are gonna <laughs> come over. I don't even hunt or kill anything. I just enjoy guns. I belong to a private gun club. I shoot a lot, and it's my zen. Yeah, man. No, like there is something to be said for. Uh, if you've had a shitty day going out and oh yeah, blasting off some fucking I, I yeah I got an old moistened the gaunt with a fixed bayonet seven sixty yes. fifty four R. I know exactly uh, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, nineteen fifty four, I think something like that. If you go on my Instagram yesterday, I was shooting some AR pistols. That I, I, put I saw you. I saw you blasting off some rounds, and I was like, man, that looks fun. <laughs> I was like, you, I looked, you know what? Looks what's fun. weird is, know what else I'm into is disc golf. Oh man! I don't know if you guys ever played that, but I, I love to play. You guys might know it as frisbee golf, but disc yeah, golf. Yeah, disc yeah. golf, man. Yeah, I, the stone. I, that's the stoner. That's the best stoner sport in the world. I'm gonna actually probably be able to, for the first time this summer, be able to do something like that. I'm I'm a chef by trade, so like literally, you like, were Midian. Yeah, really. <laughs> Midian is a professional chef at a really nice restaurant. Yeah, I've I've been I've been all over. Damn. I used to do private chef. Midian, like, Midian, Dennis Knight. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it though. Like you, the kind of people that you meet in restaurants. Yeah, that's exactly the kind. Oh, yeah. of, I, exactly. I, he looks I, like a chef. I, I, <laughs> I didn't say he wasn't fucked up. I just said he's a chef. <laughs> oh yeah, well no, that's all, that's the same. I don't thing, know if man. he cooks naked like the naked Midian. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one thing I've I have learned is that yeah you. Uh, you, you go commando everywhere but in the kitchen because the day you go commando in the kitchen is the day your pants catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, don't fry bacon naked. Don't do oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that <was> <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, well, damn, that derailed my train of thought. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I do that. <laughs> I still, I'm still good. I'm still good. I'm getting, I'm smoking some, uh, some berry OG. So, I actually, you, you, you told us some information that when you hopped on, you're getting your own strain. Very soon in California, Dr. Green Thumb, who is Be Real, uh, his uh, dispensaries, he has, I think, seven or eight in California. I think I'm going to be in over 20 stores in California dispensaries. It's going to be called O uh, Insane Godfather. And uh, it's going to be cool, man. It, it, so I'll have. Hopefully by mommy, what do you think? February? By uh, middle of February, yeah, they were waiting on they're waiting on the bags to come from China, of course. <laughs> waiting on the bags, yeah. and then I'm gonna have my own strain in California. I have I've had a lot of people ask oh, me to the whole strain. And in Vegas. Yeah. And eventually they're not in Vegas yet, but they are coming. That's to Vegas. Rob, Rob, man, you got a good <laughs> We got a comment from a from a one of the viewers right now saying that you got to have one called the Ho Strain. <laughs> I think after the Godfather, I think you might see some type of Voodoo Strain. Oh, okay. And a Ho Strain. We're gonna be straining it on out. Yeah. 
That's, that's but I tell you what, I swear to you, and I am a connoisseur of cannabis, believe me. I will not put my name to nothing that ain't fire. There you go. I, you oh, I won't person. just put my name on it to make money. It has to be fire. I hear that, man. I hear that. As as also as a connoisseur of uh, cannabis and cannabis products, I, <laughs> I I I would agree with that. That it's an important it's important to uphold certain uh, certain values in the industry. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Integrity. No, that way you don't have to. I wouldn't yeah. anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. So what what is your what is your favorite strain right now? Um, my favorite strain. I am much more of a dabber than I am oh. flower. But if I am going to smoke flower, and I'm not just saying this because it's going to be my strain, but there's something called Insane OG. Mine is Insane Godfather. The Insane OG is the, no, and I'm telling you, I've been smoking for a long time, probably most longer than most people on this show have been alive. <laughs> insane OG is the original Kush that they were selling in 88, 89, that people did not even right. know about. Well, they kept that strain, and that strain now is called Insane OG, but you can only buy it in California. And that by far, I don't know if it's an Indica, if it's a Sativa, right. I don't care. Indica, <laughs> Sativas, they don't affect me no different. Okay, <laughs> either way. Um, I don't know if it's a hybrid, don't know. It's the best tasting flower Flour is hard. I dab so much yeah. that it's hard for flour to get me medicated. And it also but, is hard for it to taste good. Uh, it's also hard to taste good. Yeah. I am a bong ripper. I believe in a fresh, clean bong and a rip. Yeah. And I keep my, <laughs> I take a couple hits and I, I change the water. Yep. But I am much more of a dabber. Dabs are, yeah, that was going to be my next rapid fire question was dabs or flower, but obviously <laughs> I always think um, dabs, dabs get you grade school high. Um, <laughs> if I'm going to smoke flower, the best that I can find, I can't find anything really good in Nevada where I live. So like insane OG is the best that I can find. And I'm telling you, not just because I'm part of it, that's the best. By far, that's the original OG Kush. When people talk about Kush, most people don't even have any idea that Kush was around in the late 90s. Yeah. I mean, excuse me, the late 80s, early 90s. <laughs> the old the old school strains, man. Oh, and I, oh my God. LA, where are you guys at? Vermont, Ohio. Ohio. Back VA. east. It, it, nothing against people back east, but they're way behind what California's been doing for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, oh, back ab east, oh, absolutely. Back east, absolutely. they came out with sour diesel, which was their big thing back east. But when they came out with sour diesel, oh. and nothing against back east, but LA had been putting out better shit than that for 10 yeah. years. Well, and sour diesel was just a rebrand of Chem Dog, too. Is that what it was? It yeah, was, it was good for back east. If you I mean, and find it's, it. I, I love, I loved that shit. I love the taste. But for me, like when it come, came to flour, like the OG Skunk One was was a great flower but for me right now gmo the the garlic mushroom onion for dabs if you find that when you're out there take a look around talk to be real whatever man see if you can find some gmo because it, it it's like it is such a unique taste and garlic mushroom and onion is like almost this it's like eating yeah it's like an italian fucking fiesta oh it's so I've let somebody named brian ortiz has talked about that he yeah, said yeah. it's thirty-two percent, but don't get don't get caught up with the percentage of THC because something thirty-two percent, something eighteen percent, depending on how it was cured and done, could be stronger than something thirty-two percent. So don't buy cannabis just because it says it's high in THC, because there's all type of games being played there. Oh man, go yeah. by the taste, go by what it makes you feel. Don't go by what the package says. Because there's a lot of politics and somebody <laughs> somebody stuff that's 30, 22 percent, but they put 32 percent. I'm telling you, but not saying that this garlic mint ain't good. I would love to try it. Yeah. Just keep an eye out for it's called GMO usually. But instead of yeah, it's garlic, GMO. Mush, garlic mushroom onion and it's fucking fire, dude. Like it is the most like insane, pungent, like stinky ass delicious fucking dab this is flour or concentrate i've i've only had it as concentrates 
but the now you dab through a rig. I dab through a rig. I have two different rigs. I have I have my work rig and I have my home rig. My work it- rig. My work rig is just like a silicone nectar collector. Okay. And I just can't, I have that in my car and a little uh, container and I just can take dabs whenever the fuck I want. It takes like 30 seconds. It's a titanium tip. Yeah. And you, just, you just touch it. But yeah, when I'm home, I like to rip fucking a proper dab. I, I, uh, I use something start. called the Rio a lot. I use a G pin. I do dabs off a rig. I do a lot of different shit, man. I mean, yeah, well, especially when people are just being like, yo, here you go. You're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. this company called Special Glass. If you look at my stories yesterday, they sent me a four foot bomb. And so I, but I, I had to leave. I unpacked it and I had to come to L.A. Well, after the show tomorrow, I'm going back home. So real I'll soon, be, I'm going to be hitting that four foot. Yo, check it. Check out check out Godfather's Instagram to fucking see that shit happen because I guarantee you we're gonna see that. <laughs> oh, I don't I don't know if Lung's on a four foot ball. It might kill me, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> yeah, I love I love that. When I back in the day when I was when I was young, uh, probably like 18, 19, me and my boys, we we would go to the hardware store and we buy like the protective light bulb like tube yeah. for the fluorescent lightness, the eight footer. And we would buy a couple little parts, and we would make an eight foot bong, and we would take eight foot bong rips. And yeah, <laughs> I was telling thing. my wife, I'm like, "Damn, now I got to do this on live te- on Instagram." Uh, okay, here we go, a four footer. You've done worse. You've done worse on Insta, man. That fucking fish bowl you did, that looked <laughs> legit. Legit looked yeah. fucking awful like i felt bad for you because like that's like not how you want that's not doesn't look like a pleasant experience Dude, that hurts your eyes your nose Every- your ears and then to do it and try not to cough yeah and it's Woo. and it's not a good kind of like burn no <laughs> like sometimes you get that cough but it's one of those ones where you like i'm gonna die like this is what it's like being in a fire in a house and being but, asphyxiated but it's something you gotta try yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, I always say, if I'll you try, insist, I'll, I'll try anything twice, man. <laughs> oh shit. So, so one thing I've I've seen an interview with uh, the uh, the interview with Stone Cold and the Undertaker. Have you, I don't know if you've seen that. I've seen on, all of them. So we've I think yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah stone cold and the undertakers i think it's on the stone cold podcast and he's talking about uh you guys on the road back in the day in the memphis days traveling in in your old car in a snowstorm yes and he man, he, taker talks a little bit of shit i'm just curious is it's a funny story but i'm curious as to what your your story is there because i'm sure that it might be pretty close but... okay um <laughs> uh how do i say this I have a whole different story than his. <laughs> I had a but feeling you would. Between me and you, his story is probably a little bit more correct than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even smoke weed back then. <laughs> I didn't smoke weed till I was Papa Shango the first time I smoked weed. So I didn't even smoke weed. But yeah, everything he says, and that's true. <laughs> that's that that should have but if he was if he, what he should have did is never let me drive even though it was my tr- car he should have never <laughs> let me drove i mean it seemed like he knew better but <laughs> well, he did but i'm telling you you couldn't tell me nothing back then he knew that <laughs> i'm sure you i'm sure your wife would say he can't tell you nothing now too right oh uh, <laughs> i don't know can you tell me anything now what can you tell me anything or no uh, Do I listen? Fuck yeah, you better listen. She said, "Fuck yeah, you better listen." <laughs> All right. Listen. She well, got she's got big there. titties, so she can get away with it. You gotta love those, man. Love those. <laughs> oh, I love big titties. <laughs> That's a wonderful. And she's got some big ones. There you go, man. You gotta, you gotta lock that down, man. <laughs> but you guys have been together for for a long time, right? Who, me and my wife, or me and yeah. Taker? You and your wife. How many years? 20? 21. Yeah, like we've been married 20, going on about 24. Man, that's and awesome. 26. And the, the funny thing about it is the whole Godfather thing, that is all her idea, not mine. No. All her from the feathers to the clothing, 
only thing I did was have fun with it and all the stupid shit. But everything else was my wife's idea. Man, that's 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 awesome, man. I like like mad respect for that. That's really cool. Thank that you. is really cool. Because I was curious about that. Because like, it seemed like a very authentic character, and and like, as much as it can be, in the fact that like. Obviously, at that point, you know, like you're you're a wrestler. Oh, you know, this fucking Jack and Coke is killing me. <laughs> hey, don't worry. I was doing shots of tequila, smoking blunts, ripping dabs, and drinking fucking a forty. So we're good. <laughs> forty-two. We've established a it's 40. a forty-two. Yeah. But I always two for save, your homie. I always save the last two for my homeboys. Yeah. You know? There you go. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Um, wow, that's no, that's like that's legit, really cool. Because like I, I did read that you had been together for like twenty oh. years, and I'm and and that you want to hear something really, and, and, and she's here now, and I don't care. But in all those years and all those holes, I never hit one of them holes, not one of them. Wow, I cheated on my wife. We've been all them years, never cheated on her. My deal with the hoes was they used to bring me weed. <laughs> and, and that makes perfect sense. And were and, and were they all just local girls who were like high? Uh, they were local locally? girls. After they did it once, I would make a deal with them and tell them, "Hey, if you want to do this again, don't wait for anybody to call you. This is what I want." And I and my wife's right here. It doesn't matter. I would tell them I wanted a quarter ounce because you're only there for the night. I'm like, I want at least a quarter ounce yeah. of the best weed you can find me. And I don't care if it's your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever it is. I said, I used to say this. I say, they'd be so glad you ain't sucking my dick. <laughs> my wife's like, Charles. I'm like, uh, that I will get some good butt out of it. And I did. And you and you shared, right? <laughs> it's not, is that pimping instead of, you know, I was pimping for weed. But that's how I got my weed. Because I kind of had an unwritten rule with whoever. I'm not going to say with that. I, I leave my my drug testing and stuff alone with the WWE because they're cool Absolutely. with me. But I, you know, I, <laughs> I, I was under the understanding that I would not travel on airplanes with it. And I didn't, but no, as soon totally as I got to my hotel, it was there. <laughs> well, I mean, but the reality is, is like, that's like, forget, forget them, like the company for a second. Like you don't want to end up getting arrested. <laughs> like that's not, that's not, not at good. that time. Yeah. That's not good for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now it's a little different. Now you can get away with it a little Dude, bit Dude, you know what? It's so funny is I used to, no matter where I went, I used to smoke. And people, yeah, as a joke, people used to say, marijuana is going to be legal one day. And I'm like, it's not now? <laughs> because wrestling, during the Attitude Era, wrestling was so big that they would overlook it. You were like Snoop Dogg. If I went someplace and smoked, the worst they would say to me is, Hey, Godfather, can you go out back and smoke? I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, that would be the and, worst. And I mean, compared to like Jesus Christ, man, compared to some of the other shit the boys were doing at that time, drug wise, like it we was made, very. We, we did not ruin anybody's career. Let's just no. say that. And, and 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 marijuana cannabis saved my life. At 27, I'm Papa Shango. I'm taking Vicodin, Somas, Percocets, Percodans, Halcyons. Uh, I mean, Take just that. just everything oh, you can imagine. I've been Plus there, drinking man. a bottle of Jack. But I won't do marijuana, okay? I won't do that. <laughs> See, I, I didn't have that. I didn't have that rule. <laughs> well, I, is I it a drug? My rule as a kid was, is it a drug? I'll do it. When Undertaker was doing the movie Suburban Commando, you guys probably don't remember that movie. I don't actually. Look it up. He did a movie I remember called over Suburb the top. with Christopher I Lloyd over the top. called Suburban Commando. Christopher he was an Lloyd. Alien. Yes. Wait, Christopher Lloyd was the alien. No, he was the like no no. Who was the alien? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to. Okay, it was called Suburban Commando. When he was filming that in L.A., I went and hung out with him for a couple weeks. And that's the he, Undertaker doesn't smoke cannabis, but yeah, I kind of got that picture. A friend of <laughs> Hogan's, a friend of a friend of Hogan's did, and Hogan was in that movie too. Hulk Hogan yes. was in Suburban Commando, and uh, uh, I I tried cannabis for the first time, and it just completely changed my life. Till now, I'll have a drink, I'll have a shot, 
but uh, cannabis is the way I go. And at my age, when you look at other wrestlers, I mean, I'll be 60 years old this year. And when you look at other wrestlers and me, they look a lot older. And I'm telling you, because I got off of all that hard shit and just did cannabis from 27 on. The, yeah, it's and, better than all the pills. Much oh. better. Yeah, no, it's it's true. It's true. Um, I mean, who is all this viewer discretion and <laughs> advice? Hector, these Hector. views are not ours. Yeah, <laughs> this if yeah, blame me. Uh, you can do, you can do me. Do you not can listen. Do these me. are not our views. Don't yeah. listen. Don't yeah, listen. Yeah, not, these you guys are be in trouble before this is over with me. Uh, I no, said, no, that's our I, show. I am the most honest guy you ever meet. I've said way worse shit than you can. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't worry. <laughs> don't, don't you worry about that, man. <laughs> um, so after your like after you transitioned from from Shango to to Kama, was it like a lot easier for you? Like as just to not have or was the face? I wasn't. Pain- I wasn't as green then, and I'd been in the business a little longer. So it, I mean, the guys with me. Wrestling has never been, this is going to sound weird, but wrestling has never been my w- number one job. Strip clubs, topless clubs, Vegas has been my main su- yeah, that source of income. That so I can, I can all, survive but... without re- wrestling. Was The money was great, but it wasn't about the money. It was about me having fun, letting my hair down and being crazy. When I was not having fun, I would leave. And that's why you'd see me come and go because I wasn't having fun. And I'm like, Vince, I'm making three, four thousand dollars a week. I'm going through tables. I'm getting hit over the head with cheers. I can make this in Vegas and not go through any of this shit. And so <laughs> I would leave and then they would literally call me and say, hey, well, we want you to come back. You want to come back? And I say, no, come on back, pal. They say, well, we're going to I was a biker. They say, well, we're going to call you a comma and we're going to let you ride a Harley. And I'm like, you're going to let me ride a Harley? <laughs> so I came back and then the Harley didn't work out. So then when they took it away from me, I didn't want to be there no more. I'm like, I'm out of oh, here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that the taker stole your gimmick twice? <laughs> I'm gonna say this, and I'm sure I'm sure Take will agree to this. A lot of what Taker is is me. Really? And because when I met Taker. Mind you, I'm an outlaw, not a, just a, I'm a black outlaw biker that belonged to an outlaw motorcycle club, a, a shoot there that wore red and white. And about everybody out of our club besides me and another guy became Hell's Angels. I got into wrestling. The other guy opened up his other business. The eight other guys that were in my club called the Thugs. And if you go back on my Instagram, you'll see the color of the patches. Are all dead, murdered, yeah. and that's where I came from. So when I met Taker, they said we're going to bring this big, tall, redheaded kid out. I already did my program with Jerry. I'm greener than greener than shit. All right, and uh, they said we're going to bring this redheaded kid in to work with you, and his name's Master of Pain. Well, he talks about the match that we had where I was so green that I. Threw him so hard into a turnbuckle, and the top turnbuckle busted. <laughs> and then I tried to shoot him into the other turnbuckle when there wasn't nothing there. We went outside, and he talks about he hit me over the head as hard as he could hit somebody with a chair. And then he goes, we could do this the easy way, or we could do this the hard way. Which way would you prefer? And I said, as I was coming to my sisters, I said, I think we'll go the easy way. But that's because I was dealing with big white dude bikers that were racist. And I didn't take no shit from these dudes, man, at all. And so after that, we became really good friends and probably to this day, one of my best friends in wrestling. Yeah, no, that's 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 really cool, man. That is (laughs) that's why. But I I do think I do think he he owes you at least. Dude, he didn't. He was a basketball player. When I met him, I'm like, this is this might sound a little racist. But I told him, I'm like, dude, listen, you're too big and white. First of all, not to listen to country music. <laughs> he liked that hairband shit, that Motley Crue and that type of shit. And I'm like, you're too big and white not to listen to country music. And you're definitely too big and white 
not to ride a Harley and not have tattoos. Yeah. I'm a big, and I'm a so, big white dude. Uh, when he got like his that. first tattoo, I took him down to my tattoo shop in Vegas, and that's where he got his first tattoo. It wasn't, it wasn't the Sarah. No, nah, that was way down the line. <laughs> yeah. But because, just See, so you, you know, I'm trying to turn talk, around. Just because, let me that. tell you something. Just because he got that stupid ass Sarah on his neck. Look at back here. <laughs> look what mine says. It says Denise. Yeah. Well, because which, my which wife one? said. My wife right now says, Mark loves Sarah enough that he put her name on his neck. I said, well, I'll put it on my back, but not on the front. <laughs> no, because <laughs> And one of you didn't need to get it covered up. Yeah, no. No, because we're which still married. Ooh, who's stupid now? <laughs> no, that, that tattoo, I was... Oof. I was like, dude, why would you do... How fucking drunk were you? Because he don't smoke. I'm like, how drunk were you? Yeah. <laughs> he regrets that one. He regrets that one. Of course, yeah. He, I would, yeah. You don't, you don't. But you don't I ended up with Denise. Right my wife's name's Denise on the back of my neck because of him. But, but you guys now are still together. Twenty four years together. So there and you we're, go. That's man. still my best friend. And that's that's it. That's man. my road dog. That's it. Man. No, and, and, <laughs> because and, just what everybody thinks: the Godfather, the epitome of fidelity. <laughs> but that's like now see, I ain't saying like back now, dog. I'm How saying long back in the day. I didn't get my, you know, I, yeah, I it's it not is well. what it is. Of course, of course. You got to, you got to learn how to, how to, you know, do, do what you got to do somewhere. You ain't going to um, land. I used to take care of the boys and I was known for, even before the Godfather, for some reason, I knew how to talk to strippers or hoes, <laughs> but I knew how to, to speak their language. So I was really good at setting them up and coming back to the rooms and stuff. So go. I've been doing that for years, and that's why it was so funny to become the Godfather <laughs> because I've been setting that shit up for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, but I didn't fuck with them. I really didn't, man. I, I was people would be one time some friends of mine had the belt. They were tag team champions, and they called me to their room. And I'm not going to mention their names, Ron and John. I'm not going to mention their names. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they the, called me to the room, uh, right, because they wanted to show off. Guys, and right? so we're in Boston, right? We're in Boston. And I go to the – Rick called me to the room, and I go in there, and they're just trashing these girls. And they both got their belts on, their tag team belt. And they're just, thank God, Father, God, Father. I come in. I look on the table. There's some <laughs> marijuana. I go over there. I roll it up real quick. I'm like, all right, peace. And I walk out. They're just both like, Godfather didn't even notice what we were doing. <laughs> you feel like, I've noticed. I just wanted to. Yeah, like, man, I just want the weed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. That's so I, good. I, I think that's akin to don't do your own stuff. If you're selling it, you don't do it. Uh Hey, Wait. I, I always <laughs> said them hoes, them hoes can't do nothing but get me in trouble. Yeah, well, that's so, that's true. Plus, See, my I, wife is more freaky than any of them hoes. You guys, I, you guys I, are like don't know what to say with me. No, no, I, I do, I do. I was, I was about to say, I've got, I've got one of those freaky hoes myself, and I, am, hey, I, hey, I, am, hey, I am very, hey, very grateful, very grateful. There was a previous episode where we might have accidentally put us some shit on YouTube that is totally not appropriate. And, um, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. It was just I, a little hair going up and down. It was just down. Like, it was the top of somebody's head. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a crazy night. I was a little distracted. And, and I, I, love, I love and appreciate you for that. Thank you. Thank you for for all you did for me that night and every every time I see you. I'm glad to be a service. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh god, man. Um so I've got a I've got a question. I'm I'm wearing a certain shirt right Shocking. here. I got I'm wearing a certain <laughs> shirt right here. Was it uh, say fuck Vince Russo? Yeah, how do you yeah. how do you feel about my shirt? I have no problem with your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> um I, I you know when we did the Brawl for All episode with Vince Russo, did you guys see that? The on the on the, the, the dark, dark side, side of the ring. Yeah. What a great yep. what like okay, just, um, know, what a great when series. Vince when Vince Russo was telling his side of the story, 
and what happened with the brawl for all, I had no idea what he was talking about. And actually during the intermission, I asked somebody, is this a work? Cause I don't know none of this bullshit about Steve Williams and any of this shit or Bradshaw and all this. And so I will say this about Vince Russo. He never did anything for me. He never wrote for me. And on that show, I always, I try to be a smart ass. And I said, so Vince, did you ever write for me? Because I'm not going to say a hundred percent that he said this, but I heard from somebody that Vince Russo said, I don't write for mid carters. <laughs> now, if that's true or not, I don't know, but he never wrote for me. Nobody wrote for me. They would give me time and I would write it myself. Nobody ever wrote for me any verbiage right. whatsoever besides saying, you need to say this town or this match. But nobody ever, I was never, nobody ever gave me verbiage to say. It was all me. Well, and Vince never Russo played. never had anything to do with me. Well, that's probably, that's probably best for your career. Yeah. So I hate mean. him or like him, don't matter. I really, I, um, he really had nothing to do with my career at all. At all. Man. <laughs> but this well, mid Carter, but this mid Carter got louder pops than any of his <laughs> top listen, guys. It's hey, much louder. This, this and my Carter, ratings during that WCW war were higher than any of his guys. You, you were my solid number two back in the day. It was Mick were, Foley than you. You were good guy, Mick. Good guy. But no, but I mean this 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 mid Carter is a, is a WWE Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. No, and, you, and, yeah. I, besides being mid Carter, we want to call it. If you look at my body of work and you look from Papa Shango, who people are still talking about today, not really Kama, but Kama Mustafa, the nation of domination the nation? and Godfather. Let me tell you something. I made that company a lot of money and a lot of my, especially the Godfather, just legendary where people still today are talking about what I did. And it was way before it's time. It was over more than Rover. And uh, I, I'm proud of what I did. I, was I the most technical wrestler? No. But let me tell you something. I was the most, one of the most entertaining. And like I said, to this day, people still remember me. And it's I, been 30 years. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, Monday Night Raw, your music hits. If there's a crowd, sorry. Oh, yeah. The, the place, the, the roof comes off. Oh, I, yeah. The roof comes off. Well, I yeah, would fucking, we got I don't, them hoes, baby. Yeah, I would mark the fuck out. <laughs> and, you know, like, and I'm and I'm I'm a grumpy old bitch, man. I I fucking hate most things like new. I I, I you know, it's, I, I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, and this is let's put it in perspective. I grew up watching Michael Jordan. I grew up in the '90s watching that Bulls team, right? And I feel like it, in a lot of ways, it's the same thing with wrestling. Like I grew up in an era where wrestling was so good that it's and so entertaining and so fun that it's for me it's going to be hard to ever reach that peak again. Right. Like you're it's it's almost like doing fucking hard drugs where you're chasing that dragon where you're right. like you're just trying to recreate. I, I, I don't that think feeling. there could be another time like that just because society now. I mean, how could you have a black guy calling white girls hoes? <laughs> Talking about smoking weed, selling pussy, rolling fatties. You know, I just don't think you could have that today. Yeah, no. I mean. And plus to have the whole WWE audience saying, roll a fatty for this pimp daddy. And, you know, I just don't think you're going to see that anymore. You, know, you got a fan here, Alan, who said uh, in December 98, the Tacoma Dome, you let him sit in your rental car. <laughs> wait, wait, and, and I, or my pimp. Did we smoke? Why was he sitting in my car? <laughs> Beats the hell out of us. That sounds maybe a little you, weird there. Yeah, right? <laughs> Hopefully we were smoking. Uh, something like that. Or maybe just jumped Dude, in. And you I mean, didn't you, talk. If I, somebody yeah, was, I was going to say, you, you might not sitting, have known. If somebody, if some dude was sitting in the car with me, we were smoking. Yeah, I guarantee you, he wouldn't be sitting there with me. Well, when you move when you move to Vermont, man, you, I'll, you, don't have to, you don't have to sit in the car. You can come in the house and we can take that. I have, I don't think Mrs. Godfather has any one on that one. She is so she's she she's immune to all this. She knows she's number one. So she don't sweat all this stupid small shit. I mean, that's 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 how you make it. 
20 plus years, man. <laughs> yes, you do. Because <laughs> otherwise, man, you end, you end up like me, man. Divorced, divorced, you know. And... Oh, God. I've been, I divorced, I've been divorced twice. Well, see, sometimes you just. First you time, third time's a charm. The second time I got married, I was on a lot of drugs. Undertaker was my best man. Undertaker refused to come to my wedding. He says, dog, you're making the biggest mistake in your life. And I can't be part of this, but you couldn't tell me. But I married this hoe anyway. And I was married a short time. And in, actually, just if you want to hear the truth, you want to hear the truth? I'll, the I'll night, the, this, is how, this is how I am. The night, and my wife's in the room right now. The night that I got married to my second wife, I spit with my wife now. <laughs> now make sense out of that. I, I mean, got I got married. I got her drunk and all peeled up and stuff. And then I went and my wife was a dancer at the time at a club. I went and put her over my shoulder. So she's over here. I put her over my shoulder, <laughs> took her off the stage, put her in my corvette, <laughs> and we took off. And I spent my wedding night with the girl that I'm married to now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like I like the girls. Oh, and my wife, you hear it? Total truth. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I expect I, I I at this point I believe everything you tell me. Man. You can tell me the, you can tell me the earth is flat, and I'd be like, damn, he just Dude, I, am, I am such the real deal that you I am so different than the rest of these wrestlers. It ain't fun, it ain't even funny. Oh my god. Because I was oh. never a wrestling fan. I watched That's... I watched roller derby. In the 70s, oh, in the no. Bay Area, roller right. derby Real was shit. much, much bigger than wrestling. And that's what I grew up off of, roller derby. All right. All right. Throw throw some names of roller derby teams. Oh, man. It was love. like 747, the Iceman. The, there was, it's a long time they had, ago. They had, they had, great they were all, re- it was the same. Everything was the same as wrestling. Everything. And Heels, now, baby face spots, everything the same as wrestling. And now it's like kind of the same though as wrestling is like when you go and see roller derby now, it's almost all all a shoot <laughs> instead of it just being like worked. It and- was a work back then, but it was a physical work. They were taking bumps back then that I bet you they don't take now. I would hope not. But yeah, I, mean, I was I was a roller derby dude. Man, I used to love going to Cow Palace and, and San Jose Civic Auditorium. To watch roller derby, especially the cow palace. <laughs> That's great. So, when you when you first got in, did you always know that it was it was the business was was bullshit? I mean, nope. and, and as far as so, I didn't know I didn't know about wrestling till I got into it. But so when you got into wrestling, you didn't know it was all work. You thought no, it was- didn't care. I just said, "Well, they're tough. I'm tough. I can do it." I had oh. no idea. <laughs> so nobody it, told me it was. I went into it thinking it was a half ass shoot. So how long? I knew that some of the punches I watched it. I'm like, well, that ain't real, and that ain't real. You know, I'm like, yeah, but that looks real. And this is what I tell people about wrestling: if it looks like it didn't hurt, it didn't. If it looks like it hurt, it did. Yeah, I I just think that's going to be my new favorite quote: a half-ass shoot. Yeah, (laughs) that was a half-ass shoot. And I'm like, well, that's right up my alley because I'm fighting every night anyway with these bikers. Yeah, at least at least these guys pull their punches a little. Dude, right? I, I swear to God, I I for five six years I fought every night because we had colors, man, and we'd go out and take other clubs' colors, and every night we'd go out and get in fights and worse shit than that. But you're talking about in the mid '80s, '84, '85. So that's a long time ago. But dude, every night was a fight. Every night we would pick up some strippers from a club, take them riding do what we had to do, and then leave them there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. Dude, I got, you know, I should write a book. I, I always tell people I should write a book, but nobody would believe it. No, man. I think uh, people, have you ever seen some of the shit people believe these days, man? <laughs> I saw, I've seen some shit, all right? People believe that that Trump and Biden have fucking swapped faces. All right. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people that believe some shit. So I don't I get involved in politics at all. <laughs> I'll be Nor 60. You. I'll be 60 years old this year. That's why I've only smiling. got a short time. I'm more That's concerned about smile. taking care of me and my wife 
in the rest of our life to the rest of this bullshit. All you young guys got to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And and you know, like the reality is too is like you've you've done you've done your part. You've made a lot of people uh, extremely happy over the years. I can say that from my own personal experience watching wrestling like definitely being one of the top like three or four wrestlers when i was a kid that i just i just loved godfather hang out with Meltzer at cow palace i know Meltzer. yeah <laughs> what do you do you do you, do you have uh do you what do you do you like him is he a good dude or is he i have good? nothing against him he was always cool with me he posted a picture of me one time that almost got me divorced from my oh, wife oh, today oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. So. he posted a picture one time when they opened the uh wwe cafe on Times square and i used to get drunk when i used to get drunk i'd take my shirt off and dance on the floor well i think <laughs> they took some girls that were working it a little bit and they took a really provocative picture with me with my shirt off and they they posted it on one of his back in the day they used to have wrestling magazines Oh, they yeah. don't have those wrestling magazines. I remember anymore. that shit. They that used to have like... four or five that came out every week. And I was on the cover of four or five of them. And I was at the gym. And my wife called me. It's like, you better fucking get your ass home. You're on the in front of the inquire with some girl with her titty in your mouth. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. It's got, it got real quiet in the back of the room there. Oh, you might man. still be upset about that. I'm but sorry. No, he's cool. I've never had a, <laughs> I never, I never, I have never had a problem with him. He's cool. That's cool. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I have, I have just, we're almost, we're almost done here. We got like, we got like eight or eight or nine minutes left, but uh, is there, is there a question that like you've always wanted to be asked that no one ever asked you? Oh fuck! I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I mean, that's that's fine. Maybe maybe all the good ones have been asked. Ask somebody. <laughs> ask me now. Yeah, I I don't know. I have I have plenty of questions, but I, I mean, so one of the questions coming from one of the many people watching that I cannot remember to look up is what type of music do you listen to today? When I'm medicated off my ass, I like rap. <laughs> When I'm working out, I like uh, slower music. Uh, I love country music. I, I, like I, old, probably, like Hank I probably say eighty percent of my the time I'm listening in my truck to country music. If I'm smoking weed or taking dab hits, rap the beats of rap sound a lot better. So so okay. what, so rap rap. What do you what do you got for rap? What's on deck usually? Oh, I don't know all the new shit, man. Don't make no, me sound old. Where I got to talk about Ice fuck Cube and Dre and uh, all I right. like the old West. I'm from the West Coast. I like the old West all Coast. Right. Rap. That's that's a that's a really good answer. But I got no problem with Biggie <laughs> or DMX or any of them guys back you get, there. You get into MF Doom. <clears throat> don't even know who the hell that is. Okay, all right. Yo, he just <laughs> passed away recently. That's all, man. That's why I'm asking. But if, if you get a chance to check him out, he was he he's. He's incredible, incredible MC. What's his name? Uh, MF Doom. Motherfucking Doom. Okay. He's yeah. Yep. He's a he's a super villain of of rap. He used he's and, like he is a, he is a pr the pro wrestler of rap. I think like as a wrestler you'd appreciate it because like his gimmick was that he was like he wore an iron mask. He was like Doom from uh, Fantastic Four. His style like so he he pretended he was a super villain. He would send imposters to shows. Like he would like have a show and people would buy a bunch of tickets, sell out. Like you know, a thousand, you know, fifteen hundred people show up, right. and he would have just some random dude in the mask show up and lip sync the whole show, and piss people off because he was a super villain. And he was like, "Yeah, that's what a super villain would do." I have to it, check him out. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> assume he's on YouTube. Oh yeah, there'll be a lot of videos because he died. He died like. Well, they announced his death on New Year's Eve because he wanted to ruin everyone's New Year's Eve. <laughs> uh, he died in, on Halloween or something, but he made his family wait to announce it to New Year's Eve because that's he, a heel he, there. Yeah, he lived that, the gimmick. <laughs> that that's awesome. Who do you listen to in country? Um, I like. Waylon Jennings, Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson, David Allen Cole. Real I, country. I, I like it. old I country. like that. Real Hank, country. Hank George Jones. Uh, 
You know, I like the older stuff that kind of described my life back in the day in the 80s and stuff. I like the 80s, the 80s. I've been there from 80 to 8 to 90. I was heavily into country music. And so uh, one of my favorites is Hank Williams Jr. That's Bo Cephas. That's one of my favorites. Junior, yo, Hank Williams Jr. is a funny motherfucker. I've smoked weed with Hank Williams Jr. Oh, so I know. Man. That, that, that is right weed there. with Willie motherfucking Nelson. So okay. I know. Oh, man. Yes. All right. Hank yeah, is bucket list. Shit. You are uh, checking off bucket my list life. items. I love Bo Cephas. Um, I had a challenge. Uh, Kurt Henning, God rest his soul. Kurt Henning said he knew more Hank Williams Jr. songs than anybody. Me, him, uh, X Pac, and Razor Ramon were in a car, and we went at it. And how we went at it is one of us would start singing a song, and the other one had to join in, and I won. Oh, That's how many yeah. Hank oh, Jr. songs yeah. I know. Hank, Hank, man, man, his shit. Country boy can't survive, man. That shit slaps, yo. Oh, yeah. Man. And back then, that's how I was living. So his song's been a lot to me because that's how I was living. I I, I had I a 50 to tobacco, had a 55 Ford pickup. I had like a shotgun the spits in my back window, that dude's had a big old cowboy hat. <laughs> Yeah, man, I love that shit. I love to spit some beach <laughs> nut in that dude's eye and shoot him shoot with, him with my old 45. Because a country boy can't die. <laughs> I had a good friend in New York City. <laughs> Never called me by my name. Just, Just him, Billy. Really. <laughs> Classic, dude. I fucking love Hank, man. He's funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, country music singers are country real close. Country music singers have been a real, real close, close family. family. I love it. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm all for it. See, that's the thing. Is I'm yeah. Now I'm there too. I'm. <laughs> it's gonna turn into now. Now such good shoot, ladies and gentlemen, is that it turned into a karaoke. <laughs> 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 there ain't a Hank song I don't know. Oh man, I love it. I love it. It's he's he's a, he's great, man. Absolutely fantastic. And and the third Hank Williams the third is really good because he reminds me a lot. I didn't of, even know there was a Hank Williams the third. Yeah, check out Hank Williams because he he's like a throwback. That's not his so. son. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I never heard of this. Legit, hundred percent. Scouts honor Hank Ooh. Williams the third, and he's a throwback to Hank Williams Senior. He's like, are very you, much, are, I ain't never heard of this. Now I'm you telling sure you, God's honest truth, name? man. I I, I never swear, remember. Hank I swear on the hoe train, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I ain't never heard of Hank. I know that there was somebody saying he was, but. Yeah, but we're gonna go with it. As long as you all, like him, it's good with me. All I can say is his uh Wikipedia page says his genres are country, heavy metal, and punk rock. That ain't Hank son. <laughs> it's his parents are Hank William Jr. and Gwen Year Game. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Hank probably had a lot of hoes for yeah, life. Yeah, he probably, he's probably got about 15. Hank was out there, Hank. baby. Hank was busting yeah. wood. He's probably more like Hank the 13th. Hank probably got 20 kids. <laughs> Hank yeah, Williams which the <laughs> they're all named Hank. It's like George Foreman. <laughs> his first name is actually Shelton. I, I swear I've never heard of him. Yeah, no, but legitimately, if you if you like if you like Hank Williams Sr., Hank Williams the third is is Hank Williams Jr.'s son, and he is he is actually pretty good. Well, I'm gonna look him up. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's he's not he's not Dre. But. <laughs> well, I hope not. Shit. <laughs> but he and, is. And he's, one final, because I guess we should end on some sort well, of wrestling he, question. He did talk about this earlier. Yeah, my yeah. first he match. Did. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. first row on Jerry, Jerry Lawler. Yeah, Memphis, Tennessee. There we go. It's been a long night. I've been half listening yeah. and half reading the comments. So, um, how was <laughs> Memphis? By the way, was that a was that a good success? Let me tell you something. When me and Undertaker tell stories, I, I talk to him all the time. Uh, we never, ever talk wrestling. We talk about his girls. We talk about my kids. We talk about guns. And when we do talk about wrestling, it's those Memphis days. 
That makes sense. And the stories from, and like in all these podcasts, he's telling it's usually from the Memphis days. There's some good stories. The the hat. Because we were, you know why? Because we were poor. We didn't have no money. There's four of us in a car driving 200 miles to make fifty dollars if you're lucky, <laughs> and you're in the main event making fifty dollars, and then have to drive 200 miles back, and then two days later drive back for another fifty dollars. We were starving. We were hungry. We learned our trade. We paid our dues, and it was the best experience that I've ever had from hoes to living to the road. By far the best experiences that we had, we talk about were the Memphis days. That's, that's awesome. Well, this has been for us, one of the best experiences as a podcast that we've had. We've truly appreciated you joining us tonight. Um, sorry <clears throat> that you're in a hotel room and you weren't able to <laughs> dab with us. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Dude, I, hotel sex is the best sex in the world. Yo. <laughs> it, 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 now because I fully they, agree. They, they, they let the freak out in them, and it's just like, I don't, I'm not going to ask you. Oh, what, what, what? What? Nothing. I was like, uh, we're going to uh, watch the TV and uh, finish your drink, baby. Finish your drink. <laughs> and, and what's Netflix best? and chill. What's best is when She's like, crack. I'm already, no, don't be afraid of me. I'm easy. When you crack the door and you get that, that, that one security lock open so you can, like, get that echo down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, no, man, come on, you got to get some. Sometimes some other freaks coming. You know. Oh, I believe me, I it, I have no problem. This is good because uh, it's good to get away <laughs> from home. I got to do the podcast tomorrow, then we get home, so it's all good. All right. Well, yeah. do you have any? You 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 got the podcast? Why don't you plug uh, plug what you got? Well, going hey, guys, on? tomorrow check me out on the Doctor Green Thumb podcast on YouTube. That's B Rose Channel. Uh, follow me on Instagram. I'm the Godfather. You can hit me up on Cameo. I have my own T-shirt company on Pro Wrestling Tees. So check me out. But more importantly, check out my Instagram. You'll get a kick out of what I'm doing on there. Yeah, and we're gonna get to see you with your with your giant bong, man, because you you <laughs> you already. Hey, made if that you problem. look at my Instagram, from you'll see that I picked it up yesterday. There's a big box that I'm standing next to, and so when I get home, I'm gonna unpack it and see what we got. And then I'm gonna take a big ass hit from it. Hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, respect. <laughs> <laughs> and until next time, we've been such good shoot. He's Isaac. He's Shane. And that is the goddamn Godfather. <laughs> Till next time, we'll see you right here. <laughs>